With over 30 years of theatrically released Marvel movies, it's always a good time to rank them all, from Howard the Duck to this summer's Avengers, Infinity War, and Deadpool 2, 51. Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, just a nightmare. A total nightmare. There have been a number of bad superhero movies, but from the talking gas cloud to filmmakers cast as Galactus to Jessica Alba's die job, this one transcends bad. 50. X-Men Origins, Wolverine, a totally chaotic stir-fry of nonsense that tells the story of how Wolverine got his claws. Features an early version of Deadpool, also played by Ryan Reynolds, whose mouth is stapled shut, which should tell you all you need to know about it. 49. Electra. that five minutes when they tried to turn Jennifer Garner into an action star went about as well as it should have. 48. X-Men, The Last Stand, just a total mess, incoherent from the word, go. After losing director of the first two X-Men films, Brian Singer to the first Superman reboot attempt, replacement Matthew Vaughn gave way to eventual director Brett Ratner, who might have killed off the superhero genre entirely were, Spider-Man, not blowing up the box office. 47. Fantastic Four 2015, there could maybe have been a good movie in here somewhere, the cast, Michael B. Jordan, Miles Teller, Kate Mara, certainly warranted one. But this Frankenstein of a film is a behind-the-scenes horror story, and you can see it in the totally disjointed final product. 46. Daredevil. This was basically, early 2000s, the movie, with Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner, Colin Farrell and Michael Clark Duncan as the main players. The cherry on top of this turd Sunday was that damn Evanescence song. 45. Fantastic Four 2005 Tim Story's first Fantastic Four is just sort of there, challenging you to remember it exists. With Chris Evans, who played the Human Torch here, going on to embody Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that gets tougher every year. 43. The Punisher 2004 This is The Punisher as a straight revenge thriller, and it's not bad. Thomas Jane performs admirably, but the whole thing is missing that extra something that would have elevated it beyond standard genre fare. Setting it in Tampa didn't help. 42. Spider-Man 3 inches maybe the bad outweighs the good here, but emo Peter Parker's dance number remains one of the greatest single moments in any comic book movie, sorry, haters. 41. Howard the Duck, a notorious flop at the box office and, yeah, it's not exactly good, but now, 30 years removed from its premiere, Howard the Duck is pretty fun as a relic of the 80s. 40. The Punisher, 1989, Dolph Lundgren and Louis Gossett Jr. star in a low-rent 80s grunge C-level classic. This one's all novelty value. 39. Ghost Rider, for a movie starring Nick Cage about a dude who rides a Harley and turns into a flaming skeleton, this is a surprisingly mundane movie. 38. The Amazing Spider-Man, we may never figure out what went wrong with Mark Webb's Spider-Man duology, but his choice of Andrew Garfield to play Peter Parker is still brilliant. It just sucks that this movie doesn't really make any sense. 37. X-Men, the beginning of the current wave of theatrical superhero movies, X-Men, was kind of a cheapie and it showed. Novel at the time, now it just comes off as unremarkable mid-budget action fare as Fox was merely sticking its toe in the superhero waters. Timid. 36. The Incredible Hulk, it's sometimes hard to remember that this one counts as part of the MCU, since it placed Ed Norton in a doctor. Banner role since inhabited by Mark Ruffalo in the Avengers films. It's also hard to remember because it's generally not memorable. 35. Thorp the fantasy Marvel movie is directed by Kenneth Branagh, who covers the whole movie in canted angle shots and theatrical stylings. Pretty boring, also, but at least it looks cool. 34. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, more of the same impossible-to-follow hack-and-slash plotting from the previous movie, offset by Andrew Garfield continuing to be awesome and Jamie Foxx going way over the top as the big bad. 
33, Thorpe The Dark World, The Dark World, in contrast to the first Thorpe movie, is certainly not boring. If anything, it suffers the opposite problem, going so hard and fast that it loses substance. 32. Blade, Trinity, starring a pre-Deadpool Ryan Reynolds basically playing a vampire slang Deadpool, throwing out one-liners like his mama's life depended on it, this may not an a good movie, but it sure is fun. 31. X2, X-Men United, a big step up from the first, X-Men, both in production values and quality, it still lacks much in the way of energy. Which is inexcusable when you've got Ellen coming as the teleporting mutant nightcrawler all over your movie. 30. Spider-Man, Sam Raimi truly assembled the prototypical superhero movie with his first entry in the Spider-Man franchise in 2002. Like X-Men, before it, Spider-Man is a bit underwhelming today, but unlike X-Men, it was proud of its nerd roots. 29. X-Men, Apocalypse, could have been a bizarre ironic summer classic if it were structured like a real movie and had any character development whatsoever. Instead it's just a shot of visual adrenaline that I'll probably want to revisit at some point, but not when I'm sober 28. Avengers, Age of Ultron, Ultron, is frustrating for what it lacks, chiefly the feeling that it's advancing the overall story arc of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But as with the first, Avengers, movie its weaknesses are overcome by great character work. 27. Iron Man, it was Robert Downey Jr.'s re-emergence on the big screen, and he's flawless in this origin story that takes Tony Stark from billionaire playboy weapons manufacturer to billionaire playboy other things manufacturer. 26. Blade, pure B-movie trash which is fine because that's precisely what it aims for, bloody, crass, awesome. Blade, by the way, remains the only black comic book character besides Shaquille O'Neal's Steel to get his per own movie, though Marvel's Black Panther is slated for a 2018 release. 25. Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, for the sequel, they tapped the crank director duo known as Neville Dine, Taylor. It was an inspired choice, because Spirit of Vengeance was exactly as nutty as you'd hope a PG-13 comic book movie would be. Shame that it was apparently stressful enough to break up the tandem of Mark Neveldine and Brian Taylor. 24. Captain America, The First Avenger A lot of folks like to complain that all superhero movies are the same. But this was actually a pretty good World War II movie, too. 23. Punisher, Warzone, whereas the previous Punisher movie was melodramatic and contemplative, this one is just murderous. And it's awesome. 22. Guardians of the Galaxy Plot-wise, it never really adds up to anything, but the strength of the cast in the bizarre world they explore more than make up for it. 21. Blade 2, beloved nerd Guillermo del Toro took over for this one and ramped everything up to 11. More vampires, more blood, more people getting sliced up, and of course baddies whose jaws can split open and swallow a person's head whole. 20. Big Hero 6, Disney Animation Studios made a Marvel movie, and it's really sweet. Sure, it's the kiddie version of Marvel, but that doesn't prevent it from being a wholly satisfying experience. 19. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 inches. An improvement on the first film, and an absolute delight from moment to moment, but it never quite coalesces into a coherent whole because so many subplots distract from the core story and rob it of its emotional impact. Would be a top 5 comic book movie if it had just reigned in the plot. 18. Hulk In 2003 the modern wave of superhero movies was still in its infancy, and Ang Lee, still the best filmmaker to do a comic book movie, got experimental with Hulk, and what he made was an incredible melodrama with visual stylings meant to ape comic book panels. It didn't sit well with audiences, but Hulk remains one of the most compelling and interesting Marvel movies to date. 17, The Wolverine. This was, like, just a legitimately enjoyable melodramatic action movie. 
match. It turns into a video game boss battle by the end, but for most of its running time it's just an actual movie. 16. The Avengers, the story is a total mess, relying heavily on moviegoers' memories of previous MCU films, if you didn't remember or know coming in what the Tesseract was, who boy. But the novelty of the Marvel's first big superhero team-up was irresistible, and director Joss Whedon balanced his ensemble expertly, giving everyone plenty to do so none of them ever fades into the background. 15. X-Men, Days of Future Past, its time travel logic is a bit iffy, but Days of Future Past is still tremendously entertaining because, while epic, it's not overly serious. As Back to the Future taught us long ago, you can get away with a lot of logical leaps if you strike the right tone. 14. Deadpool. In the angsty and angry times we live in, Deadpool is perfect. Aggressively violent and flippantly mean-spirited, it's the exact emotional release we needed. 13. X-Men, First Class, the first X-Men movie that could be described as fun. It's basically two movies crammed into one, story-wise, but director Matthew Vaughn's touch is so breezy and enjoyable that it totally works anyway, thanks in large part to a brilliant cast that includes Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence and James McAvoy. 12. Spider-Man Homecoming Not quite the best Spider-Man movie, but still an absolute delight, with a cast full of scene stealers. Michael Keaton as the Vulture makes for one of the best Marvel villains ever. 11. Deadpool 2 While you may get whiplash from the Deadpool sequel's occasional very serious anemo scenes, the rest of the movie is thoroughly delightful, somehow managing to be even funnier, and more hilariously violent, than the original. 10. Ant-Man Ant-Man represented a first for the MCU by being a straight-up comedy. And it's a very good one, with a cast that's perfectly suited for it. Aside from Paul Rudd who plays Ant-Man himself, Michael Peña is the true standout as Scott Lang's best friend and former cellmate. 9. Doctor Strange If it weren't hamstrung with all the requisite elements of an origin story, Doctor Strange might have been the best Marvel movie ever. That's the power of the astonishing visual imagination on display here. We love to talk about the nebulous concept of capturing some long-lost childlike sense of wonder though the magic of cinema, Doctor Strange, is one of the only movies I've watched as an adult that really accomplishes that. 8. Spider-Man 2 This is a movie that fully understands its main character and taps into what made him such a captivating figure for so long. Yeah, Peter Parker is a superhero, but he's also a college kid working a minimum wage job to make rent while also taking university physics classes. Peter buckles under the pressure, something we can all relate to. 7. Iron Man 3 Inches As far as I'm concerned this is the Iron Man movie. Somehow, Shane Black was able to infiltrate the MCU and make a legitimate Shane Black movie with all the wit and raw humanity you'd expect from him. It carries exactly the sort of authorial identity we should want all these movies to have. 6. Thor, Ragnarok, a thorough delight. This might be the most fun we had at the movies in all of 2017, and so we can't help but love it. 5. Captain America, Civil War, multiply the two previous best Marvel movies by one another and you get Civil War, it packs the sort of emotional payoff all the disconnected Marvel movies can't really provide. And as an action film it's easily the best of the superhero genre. 4. Black Panther, it's held back a little by being saddled with standard origin movie issues, introducing audiences to the world of Wakanda isn't a quick and easy task, and it could use an extra 15 to 20 minutes to flesh out the supporting characters, but still manages to be the most substantial superhero movie ever. It's kind of amazing that Disney let writer, director Ryan Coogler make this overt a political statement, it's the most openly political mega-budget movie I've ever seen. Also, while I'm listing superlatives, Michael B. Jordan delivers the best performance ever in a superhero movie. Good lord. 
3. Avengers Infinity War You could certainly make the argument that Infinity War does not really hold up on as a complete movie on its own, because it kinda begins with the second act. But I don't care. The culmination of this 10-year, shared universe experiment should stand on the shoulders of the movies that came before it. The fact that it packed such a profound emotional punch, however, is what really makes it work. 2. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, The Russo Brothers, who made their entrance to the MCU directing, Winter Soldier, before taking the reins on, Civil War, and, eventually, 2018's, Avengers, Infinity War, really impressed with Winter Soldier, it's a classic spy thriller with a superhero twist. And Robert Redford as the bad guy is a really nice touch. 1. Logan, James Mangold's small-scale western is a game-changer for the entire superhero genre, daring to defy pretty much standard by which you expect these movies to operate. It's just a great movie by any normal standard. Where, Civil War, elevated the genre, Logan, opts instead to be something else entirely and we are all the better for it. With over 30 years of theatrically released Marvel movies, it's always a good time to rank them all, from Howard the Duck to this summer's Avengers, Infinity War, and Deadpool 2.